this to the scientific method. Okay, scientific method. Um, the first step in hypothesis testing is to set up your hypotheses. And then you create what is known as the decision rule. Okay? The third step is that you take a sample. The fourth step, you um, compute your test statistic. And the fifth step, you uh, form your decision based on where the test statistic lands in your decision rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about each step to go through this process. And um, this, is actually, this is actually analogous to the scientific method. Okay? Because you can't, you're not really free to just make statements. There has to be some sort of information that backs up what you're saying. And um, this is hypothesis testing. You make a statement. And then you test whether or not that statement is valid or not, based on a sample. Okay, And uh, you could make statements about pretty much anything, as long as in statistics it involves these parameters, right? Then you could test your statement. And that's all you're doing. You're testing your statements. But it's a procedure. Okay, So we have to go through the procedure. And then once you go through the procedure, you just practice it you know, over and over again. And, and then you're done. It's like, it's like an operation. When a doctor operates on you, there's a procedure that was created. And then that doctor, that doctor just isn't, OK, I'm just going to experiment and do whatever the doctor decides to do. The doctor has to go through a, a procedure. And if the doctor doesn't, what's the problem? There could be some issues. OK, so we're going to go through the procedure. And as a doctor practices the procedure, we practice the procedure, okay, so that when the surgery does occur, there's no problems. Okay, the first step is to set up your hypotheses. This is what I call the setup. There's three types of setup. Okay, it's the parameter equals a value. And what's the opposite of that statement? Do you guys know? Good. It's what? Not equal. Maybe we'll put that in blue. So the opposite of equal is what? Not equal. So we have the parameter equals a value, and the parameter does not equal a value. Those statements are opposite. Because here's what's going to happen. <coughs> okay. One of the statements is going to be valid. The other one is not. Okay, So notice that these are logical opposites. It either is equal or it's what? None. Not equal. Okay, um, That's the first type. The second type looks like this. You have a parameter um, is greater than or equal to a value. And you have your parameter, what's the opposite of greater than or equal? You say, well, not greater than or equal, but what does that mean? Less than. So notice here that these also are what? Logical opposites. So one of these statements are going to be valid based on your sample. Okay? Either, the, either the null hypothesis or the alternate. And then finally, um, we'll put the third one here. Parameter 
okay, is less than or equal to the value. And then we have a parameter. What's the opposite of less than or equal? Greater than. Greater than the what value? So notice, again, that the opposite of less than or equal is what? Is greater than. So one of those two statements are going to be valid based on your sample. OK? And do you guys notice that I labeled null and alternate appropriately? Null and alternate, null and alternate. OK, this is that first step. This is your setup. OK, does anybody have any questions on the setup? Do you have to give one type, or you have to set up all three? No, it's going to only be of one type. Based on whatever the law is. Based on whatever the claim is, yes. One of these three. Yeah, it'll be either this one or this or this, and that or is um, exclusive, not inclusive, meaning it can't be both. <laughs> okay, so based on like for instance this setting here, right? If this if they if this was your claim, you go, you know what? I think that the proportion of students who are female is greater than that fifty that point five. Well, that that's going to be worse. P greater than point five. Ah, it's the third what? Set up only. See what I mean? So we'll go through some examples of it, but it's only going to be one. You don't have to do three. It's only one. What do you, what do you just identify the question that you're asking for to go back to your setup? Exactly. You use the right setup. Okay. Now each setup has its own decision rule. So the decision rule for the first setup. Okay. Here's your decision rule now. And this is what it's going to look like. OK? This is, the pic this is a picture of the decision rule. For this first setup, this is what's known as a two-tail test. OK? And so I'm going to draw two tails here. You see the region that's not shaded? This region is known as the do not reject the null hypothesis region. And the shaded regions are known as the reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Do not reject the null, and then the tails are reject the null. Okay, this is your decision rule. Now let's recall. You guys remember last week I said I gave you language regarding um, what you see here. Okay. Uh, what was the sum of the tails? You guys remember? What was the sum of the tails? What, what, was, what was the definition of alpha? Alpha was what? Well, it's the significance level. That's true. It's called the significance level, but it is also the sum of the what? The tails here. Okay, and we called this last week, we called this the confidence level. So this was the 1 minus alpha. Remember that? Okay. What was this called? What was these values called last week? What were they? What were these values? You guys remember? Mm -mm. They were what? Critical values. Critical values. And the task for you last week was to determine what? Critical values. You even did that for your warm-up. So with hypothesis testing, like I said last week, you do this right now. I think I even said you're going to do this for the rest of the course. Remember that? So if you do it right now, then you're going to do it right for the rest of the course, and that's a good thing. So. 
How you, this is a part of your decision rule. This is probably the major part of the decision rule, is to determine the critical values for these various regions. Because what's going to happen is we're going to take a sample, compute a test statistic. We're going to see where that test statistic lives, lands, in relation to this decision rule. If the test statistic is between these two critical values, what's the conclusion? If the test statistic is greater than this critical value, if it's less than this critical value, see what I mean? So that's why I made such a fuss last week. I said, Drew, you're warm up. What is it? These are the definitions, right? That's why I made that fuss because I knew, like last week and this week, a big part of what you're going to need to do is that critical value. OK? You guys OK with that? OK, that's your first decision rule associated with this setup. So we're now going to have to look at the other decision rules. OK? And this is known as a left tail test. And then you're going to say, how do you know that this is a left tail? And how do you even know that this is a two tail? Well, you guys know what you do? You're going to look at the alternate hypothesis. If the alternate hypothesis is a not equal, well, then that's what? Two tails. If the alternate hypothesis is less than, that's pointing where? To the left. Then it's a what? If the alternate hypothesis is pointing to the right, then what kind of test is that? That's a right tail. So that's how you determine what type of decision rule that you have. Two tail, left tail, or a right tail. OK? OK, you guys OK with that? And similarly, the non-shaded region is what? Do not reject the what? The null. What's the shaded region called? Reject the null. Here, do not reject the null. And then here, reject the null. And also, the shaded region, ladies and gentlemen, since there's only one tail, you say, well, isn't it by definition the sum of both shaded regions? Well, take that, add it with 0 if you want to think of it that way. The point is, the level of significance, alpha, is all in the what? Left tail. Similarly, alpha over here is all in the what? Right tail. So this is where your level of significance is. This is the level of significance. Okay. Zero, Z, zero, Z. What value separates the rejection region from the non-rejection region? That's a what? It's a critical value. That's why they call it critical value. What value separates the do not reject region from the rejection region? Critical value. OK? So these are your decision rules. And for the moment now, what we're going to go to next is your what? Take a sample. And from your sample, you're going to compute a what? Test statistic. This is just a formula. It's a formula based on your sample. So you plug it all in and do what? Hit equal on your calculator. <laughs> and from, from my experience, people usually do um, all that. People do OK with the test statistic. People are usually sort of accurate with the test statistic. The funny thing is people are not accurate. I notice more errors with critical values <laughs> than computing test statistics. <laughs> 